Texas A&M's last head coaching hire turned out to be an absolute disaster. Jimbo Fisher took the bag of $76 million and ran, leaving fans feeling misled and angry. Aggie fans expect their team to be a top-tier program and nothing less, but since they've joined the SEC in 2012, they've never even won their division. No, not the conference as a whole, their division. For a school that puts in so much funding to the football program, that's a shame. For these reasons, plus the changing landscape of college football with conference realignment, it has never been more pivotal for A&M to hire a coach that can win now, and also sustain long-term success. To put it short, they cannot afford to miss again, or they risk falling into the abyss of college football. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe so you never miss out on another great upload like this. Too many of you are watching my videos all the way through. You're enjoying it, you're engaging, but you're forgetting to push that button. Do so to join the best family in college Texas football. Texas A&M is putting all their chips into head coach Mike Elko, who Aggie fans are very familiar with. Many people expected them to hire another big name to follow in the footsteps of Jimbo, like Dan Lanning from Oregon or Ryan Day from Ohio State. These may have just been delusional Aggie fans, but still, you get the point. Casual fans may not even know who Mike Elko is, but everyone knows about the recent resurgence of Duke football and how they're back on the map, and it was all orchestrated by Elko himself. It was not a smooth hiring process by a and at all. To be honest, it was disastrous. Late in the night of November 25th, 2023, news stories surfaced that Kentucky's head coach Mark Stoops had accepted the job. According to inside sources, he had even told staff members and family that he was headed to College Station. Psych! The deal ended up falling through shortly after, and the next day it was announced that Mike Elko was hired. What a turn of events, and what a shock. This is a horrible look for both the school and Elko. However, a and assured everyone that he was their first choice and they found the right guy. Who is Mike Elko and how did he get here? His first major role in college football was at the young age of 31 where he was a defensive coordinator for Bowling Green under Dave Clawson starting in 2009. This team had some pretty bad seasons in those years, but they finally broke through in 2013 with a 10-4 record. Elko did his job well enough to get hired again as DC when Clawson moved on to coach Wake Forest in 2014. Wake Forest was in a bad spot when he arrived in Winston-Salem, but eventually by 2016, they went 7-6 and six with a solid defense and reaching a bowl for the first time since 2011. Elko would pack his bags for Notre Dame after that season, however, as he was hired as DC for Brian Kelly's staff prior to the 2017 year. He did do well with the Irish as they ended up 11-3 and three on the year, finishing 11th in the rankings, but his time in South Bend would be short-lived. It was time for Mike Elko to get paid. In 2018, he agreed to be the defensive coordinator for Texas A&M with Jimbo Fisher. His deal was three years for six million, which made him the fifth highest paid coordinator in college football. We're all familiar with the way that AM was throwing money around at the time, and we knew how it turned out. Those Fisher teams mightily underperformed, but luckily, Elko got out of there before he could get thrown under the bus. He was finally ready to move up to a head coaching job. On January 4th, 2021, Duke announced Elko as their guy, but this was going to be no easy task as the three seasons prior, the Blue Devils went for five wins, two wins, and three wins. Duke was obviously known for being a basketball school, and to be honest, people didn't care about Duke football. Coming in as a first-year head coach, Elko had an uphill battle to create a winning culture, and if he did, it would truly be incredible. People were shocked that Duke went 9-4 in 2022. They were led by a young quarterback named Riley Leonard, and their biggest win on the year was a road game against Miami, blowing them out 45-21. Since Elko was a defensive-minded coach, people questioned how his team would score, but they did a solid job with the fifth-best offense in the ACC. 2023 started with a bang, and I'm sure we all remember the early season hype around Duke football. Duke played number 8 Clemson on a Monday night of opening weekend with the entire country watching. They put on a show and ran the Tigers out of the building, winning 28-7. After starting 4-0 while being ranked as high as number 17 in the nation, Duke hit some speed bumps for the rest of the year while battling through injuries and multiple ranked matchups against teams like Florida State and Louisville. They ended up at 7-5, but this was still a massive success. Elko was reviving a dead program, and the narrative around Duke football was changing. They were respected a lot more by teams in their conference and fans around the country. He went 16-9 in his two seasons in Durham, which may not look fantastic on paper, but given the context, you have to give him massive credit. After seeing very mixed opinions on social media, here's the million dollar question that all you Aggie fans want to be answered. Will Mike Elko win at Texas A&M? Yes, he will, and I think he was a great hire. First, he knows how to win with limited resources as he proved that at Duke. These type of coaches are the best as they can develop players and are fit to win anywhere they go. He is going to Texas A&M with unlimited resources, recruiting ties, NIL money, and one of the most passionate fan bases in college football. You put a good X's and O's coach in that environment, they're bound to succeed. Second, he 
already understands the culture in College Station as he was on the staff for three years. He mentioned this familiarity in his opening press conference, and I agree that this is going to benefit him. He's bringing his, quote, blue-collared mentality with him, which means they're going to play defense at a high level, which is the identity of an Elko team. Maybe you could get away with a lousy defense in the ACC, but that is not going to fly in the SEC, so his defensive-minded ways are important. As for recruiting, Elko wants to revive A&M's relationship with local recruiting in Texas. As we all know, Texas is known for being one of the most talented states in the country. It'll be interesting to see how Elko builds his staff as he's going to need an offensive coordinator that fits with his system. At the time of this video, we do not know who the OC is yet, but it's rumored to be Duke's Kevin Johns, and they already work well together in Durham. If Johns gets promoted to the head coach of Duke, Elko will have to go on a national search. Either way, the offensive play caller is going to be crucial to this team. The details of the contract got released and Elko got a contract that is very heavily incentivized. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Seven years, $7 million, which for AM standards, you might think he's getting robbed. But for reaching the college football playoff, that's an added $1 million. For reaching the quarterfinals, that's an added $1.5 million. And for winning it all, that's $3.5 million. I think this is an awesome decision for the Aggies after what happened with Jimbo Fisher. The contract provides extra security for the program as they just bought out a failed coach for $76 million. A lot of AM players are hitting the portal, talking bad about their program on social media right now, and a lot of other drama, so it's not going to be easy for Elko to turn it around. But I believe he will do it, and is the perfect guy to be in College Station. It may not be instantaneous like what he did at Duke, but give him some years to build, and AM will be competing for national championships. You guys can all come back to this video years later and say I was right. And just for that, make sure to subscribe to join the best family in college football. I've been Saturday Shenanigans, your home for unfiltered college football content, and I'll see See you guys in the next one.